What's going on guys? Welcome back to Life by the Bow. I'm Clay, this is my wife Stephanie. Hey guys. And she's playing captain today. I'm playing cameraman just like the good old days. And we're gonna go and try to catch a swordfish off the 24 Pathfinder. So let's go ahead and see if we can get it done. which in my opinion is probably one of the worst sea conditions you could be in just because each wave is like a ramp and you're constantly just jumping over the top of the waves and the spring and summer and fall months that's typically what we get down here in the Florida Keys is a head sea every single time we're going offshore fishing but we're in probably about two to three foot seas I would say right now which is not favorable for a bay boat but we're pretty skilled at this at least I'd like to think so, <laughs> this is something we can handle. It didn't take long for us to get into some action. On the way out, we spotted a group of birds that were hovering right over a piece of bamboo. So, we have life on top and structure on the surface. Regardless if we can't find anything visually, we know if we spend enough time here casting, eventually fish may swim up to the boat. Oh, I'm on! Oh! oh all right. Stephanie's got a little one on right now. I got now. a little peanut on, but here's the thing. Since he's small, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring him to the boat, see if anyone's with him, and it seems like he's alone. There's but gotta be more on that log. It's the start of a fishing trip. Look at them right there, yep. behind. All underneath the boat. Whoa, they're all around. Clay, they look bigger. Oh, this is so cool. We're all kinda... right, then let's grab a D-hooker, release them, see if we can get another one. All right, let's do it. They're all just chilling around this log, so let's just take our time. Okay. That's sweet. That's really cool. So the cool thing about this is, look, we're not gonna beat up this mahi, right? We're gonna just release him and keep him in the water. That's what I love about our D-hookers is we're doing, whoa, or we just release him go. that way. So we were just running in the boat and we saw a whole bunch of birds. And as we got closer towards the birds, we saw this little piece of bamboo and there's just a massive school of mahi around the boat. And it looks like they're eating the barnacles off of this piece of bamboo. I've never seen that before. I've never seen that before either. Let's see if we can catch one. Got him. You're on? Yep. This is a big school too. I'm surprised. On the Avail prototype rod, it just kind of stinks, man. I mean, our mahi population has really changed. I mean, there's plenty of them here when you can get into a nice school, but the issue is, is getting one big enough to keep. I mean, I could try to measure him and see if he makes it, but to me, it's not worth it. I'd rather just release him rather than beating him up and then just to find out he's not legal. So if it's a question, we like using our D hookers. <clears throat> Easy as that. Now, before we go fishing, we like to set personal limits based on why we're actually going to keep a certain number of fish. A mahi can grow almost three inches in a week, so some of these fish may be legal as early as next weekend. But ultimately, I don't think handling and overfishing in Florida is the problem with our mahi population, but I sure think it makes the problem worse. Releasing any fish beside the boat, in my opinion, is the only way I think it should be done, whether it's inshore or offshore. So we just got to the sword grounds, and I can already tell you, this is our first time attempting to swordfish out of the 24 open. And this T-top is going to come in handy on days like today. Clay, was it a great investment or what? Yeah, and the autopilot. And the autopilot. I'm just sitting here looking pretty. All right, so this is our bait here, which is an eel. Stephanie's gonna toss it out right now. I'm gonna have a link to a video down in the description, which goes over this rig. Now she's just clipping that weight on, just like that, and she's gonna let it rip. 
Now I just have the boat on autopilot going down current. That way we could line up perfectly on our spot. Now we're gonna turn around and get right back on top of it. Fingers crossed. Right now we're drifting and I'm enjoying a delicious Cherry Coke Zero and just pop the boat in gear and just put the trolling motor on spot lock. What that does is it holds the boat right in place for as long as I want it to, just to slow down that bait on the bottom, just to make it look a little more natural. This is something that you can only do, for the most part, on a bay boat since it has a trolling motor. Within 15 minutes, we hooked our first swordfish, which was a nice surprise because you could spend days out here with no signs of life but the excitement didn't last too long because we pulled them off about five minutes into the fight. We've stayed right on him and we've allowed, you know, that oh, drag, just we just pulled. pulled. Unless he's swimming up. No, nope, he just pulled off right there. Did he? Ah, oh, well That that's... is sword fishing. A sword fish is very comparable to a tarpon in my opinion, therefore you'll hook more than you'll actually catch. But shortly after, some porpoises came to hang out around the boat, so we set up to make another drop, since for us, they're a sign of good luck. Oh, that is so cool. It's about to jump. That's cool. Did that you get that? Cool. Yeah. Porpoises are very friendly and extremely intelligent. It's actually illegal to approach them. However, they love to socialize and they chose to come with us on our next sword drop. So it's always such a fascinating experience interacting with these guys because their curiosity coupled with the way they strategically maneuver around the boat always blows my mind. But after a little while, the fun was over, the luck followed, and it was back to business. Got another one on. Fingers crossed, it yep. actually happens. I would really like to bring home some swordfish. Not only is it tasty, but I, I, it's I would just also, love to eat one. Yeah. Honestly, it's been such a long time. And here's the thing, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people look at this and they're like, oh man, they're using an electric reel, that's not fishing, but look, it's tough. You know, some days you're out here all day, you don't even get a bite. So. However we can make this process as easy as possible, that's what we're doing. Hence, why we're in the bay boat, we're using an electric reel. And for us, it's more so about Stephanie and I being out here, spending time together, having a good time. So it's not really about being sporty in my opinion, it's just about going out in your backyard, catching some fish. So I'll be happy if this one's legal and we could take one home. So Stephanie's putting the gaffs inside the leaning post right now trying to keep everything within the center of the boat. That way there's no obstruction here. We can work this fish up. I think we might have ourselves a keeper, Stephanie. Listen, I don't like to speak so soon. I get so nervous when this like all gets to the end. It's like you're so like hyped up. Your heart's up. just pumping. I know. Uh-oh, he's coming quick. We're at two, 300. He's coming really fast. He's coming yeah. really, really fast. Here, step he aside. He stopped fighting. I think we lost him. No. All right, we're, we should be coming close to the weight. Yeah, we're at 100. Get oh my ready God. to stop it, okay? Okay, I'm ready. Oh my God, my heart is... Get it, get it! We're Couple. good, we're good. He's still there. He's, real, he real, should real, be breaking. Real, real, real. There we go. There we go. All right, let's see, moment of truth. Is he big enough? I don't know. I'm gonna be ready with a gap. Got the troll motor in motion right now. Keep him going, keep him going, keep him going. Slow down, slow down. He's too small. He's too small. Yeah. Dang. Ah. Oh, me. No, he might make it. Yeah, he may make it actually. Oh, oh, oh. Just, oh. I'm letting him go. I'm letting him go. No, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm Loosen letting the drag. him go. Good job, good job. Good job. Good okay. job. I don't know, this is a hard. I, that's the thing, like that's a hard one to determine if he's legal or not. I broke. He could make it. I broke my fingernail. I think this is a legal fish. He's about, he's around. Huh? Just come back over. Okay. He's like borderline. He's gotta be 47 to the underneath of his mouth. So you bring him over. Bring him over. 
Grab his bill. I got his bill. You want to try? It's 52. No. Yeah. No. Bring him in. Let's do it again. Oh. He came off. Damn. We should have put a gaff in that fish. Whatever. It was so questionable. I can't even, I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it. There's an old saying that says, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. But on a positive note, the fact that the fish was questionable, we know there's good karma coming our way and doing the right thing. Ultimately, today wasn't a failure unless you perceive it to be, and that goes for everything in life. What you say becomes your reality. So you can sit there and complain and feel sorry for yourself, or you can get back up on your feet, learn from your failures, which ultimately makes us all into better versions of ourselves. Oh. Woo! Look at that! Got one. Little peanut, but... Look at that. There's some bigger ones Yeah, there in are there. some bigger ones. He, looked like, he looks like he could make it. Woo. There we go, right there. 22 inches of the fork. First mahi, 2023. Woo! Let's see if we can get another one. Woo! Woo! Got him! I'm on! Doubled up! Woo! Oh, look at him go! That is so cool. They're all underneath the boat right now. Mine's a little guy. So is mine. Hold up, wait a minute. Yeah, he's the little guy. Just toss him. Here, give me that D hooker. Well, as you can see, good karma arrived rather quick since on our way in, we were lucky enough to hit another flock of birds. After that, we went on to catch a couple more fish. So, hey, mission accomplished. Once the boat leaves the dock, our mission is at least to catch something, and we did just that. Plus, the fact that we didn't keep a swordfish, now we have a great excuse to get back out there. Overall, there's a lot of different ways you can look at the day, but a bad attitude delivers bad results. With that being said, you don't necessarily get what you want, rather, it's about being content with what you get. Well, it's the next day here, and as you can see, the weather definitely took a turn for the worse. But, just goes to show that it's not always beautiful down here in the Keys, especially after the beautiful day we had yesterday. Got my beautiful wife here, speaking of beautiful. And Hi. she's about to make some fresh mahi for lunch. So I recently made a batch of chimichurri. I like to add it on my chicken, on my steak. So why not add it on the chicken of the sea? And this mahi looks delicious. So it's gonna be a quick, simple recipe. I'm gonna blacken it, add some chimichurri, and that's it. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. I hope you guys have been enjoying some of the inspirational type of content and voiceovers that we've been doing in the videos. And it's mainly just because, you know, we wanna make sure that we're inspiring people and motivating people because ultimately it's what can help you towards success and success makes it that much easier to get out on the water. So that's really what it's about, but we appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching once again. And till then. Yeah, we'll see you in the next video. All right, guys. Bye.